The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya by Nagaru Tanigawa Published by Yen Press The question of how long someone believes in Santa Claus is a worthless topic that would never come up in idle conversation. Having said that, if you're going to ask me how much of my childhood I spent believing in an old man in a red suit, I could confidently say that I never believed in him to begin with. I knew that Santa at the preschool Christmas pageant was just a fake. Digging into my memories, I'm pretty sure that the other kids watching our principal dressed up as Santa didn't think he was real either. I was a precocious child who didn't need to see Mommy kissing Santa Claus to question the existence of an old man who only worked on Christmas. However, I wouldn't realize that aliens, time travelers, ghosts, demons, espers, and evil organizations, and the heroes that battle them in cartoons, monster movies, and comics were made up until some time later. No, I had probably already realized the truth. I just didn't want to admit it. Deep in my heart, I wish that aliens, time travelers, ghosts, demons, evil organizations, or espers might just pop up in front of me one day. Compared to the ordinary world I wake up in every morning, the worlds depicted in cartoons, monster movies, and comics would have a certain charm to them. I wish I could have been born into one of those worlds. Saving a girl who's been kidnapped by aliens and imprisoned with a huge transparent pea shell? Repelling a laser-wielding time traveler trying to change history armed only with my courage and wits? Taking out evil spirits and demons with a single incantation. Engaging in psychic battles with espers from a secret organization. Those were the things I wanted to do. Wait a minute. Assuming that aliens, etc. were actually to attack, without having any particular special powers, I would have no way to battle with them. So I did some brainstorming. A mysterious transfer student suddenly arrives in my class one day. That student turns out to actually be an alien or time traveler or something along those lines with unknown powers. Then... The student happens to be fighting against some evil gang, and I just happen to get caught up in that fight. The other student is the main one doing the fighting, I'm just the sidekick. Hey, that sounds cool. Damn, I'm smart. Or, how about this? I'll just go with suddenly waking up one day with special powers, telepathy or psychokinesis or something like that. It turns out there are a bunch of other people with special powers. Naturally, there are organizations recruiting such people. Members of a heroic organization come for me and I end up joining them in their battle against evil espers seeking world domination. However, reality is rather cruel. Fact is, no one has ever transferred into my class. I've never seen a UFO. Going to all my local haunted spots yielded nothing in terms of ghosts and demons. Staring intently at a pencil on my desk for two hours didn't even make it move. And I would be more likely to burn a hole in the head of the guy sitting in front of me than to read his mind. You have to admire how well the laws of physics were written while fighting the urge to laugh at yourself. At some point, I stopped being glued to the TV watching specials on UFOs and psychics. They couldn't possibly exist, though I kind of wish they did. I figured my ability to hold on to my convictions while accepting reality was a sign that I matured. When I graduated from middle school, I also graduated from those childish dreams and became used to the normalcy of the world. 1999 was my last hope and it wasn't like anything was going to happen that year anyway. We reached the 21st century without humankind making it beyond the moon. It looked unlikely to travel to Alpha Centauri and back within a day would happen in my lifetime. Having pushed such thoughts into the corner of my mind, I entered high school without a care in the world and met Haruhi Suzumiya. Chapter 1 My first regret, upon successfully cruising through admission to a local public high school, was that the school was situated atop a rather sizable hill. This meant that I found myself trudging up the winding hill, dripping sweat when it was only spring, feeling like I had already done enough hiking for a lifetime. The fact that I had to embark on this hill every day for the next three years depressed me deeply. Though, if I stopped to think for a moment, lying in bed until the last second possible might have just been the reason my legs were moving so quickly. Which meant that if I were to wake up ten minutes earlier, I'd be able to take a more leisurely pace, and the hike wouldn't be such a pain. Of course, once I factored in how precious those last 10 minutes of sleep were, I realized that waking up earlier was simply out of the question. This meant that I would be required to continue the morning workout, which depressed me even more. And so, for the duration of the school commencement ceremony, held in an absurdly large gymnasium, I, unlike the other new students whose faces shone with hope and anxiety and anticipation of life at a new school, merely looked gloomy. A good number of people from my old middle school were there, and I had been on a pretty good terms with a few of them, so I wasn't too concerned about making friends. It seemed like an odd combination to have guys in blazers and girls in sailor uniforms. Maybe Principal Tope up on the podium, putting everyone to sleep with his droning sound waves, happened to be a fan of sailor uniforms? 
While I was thinking about this, the trite, monotonous commencement suddenly ended, and I shuffled into my assigned classroom, 1-5, with the rest of my classmates, whose faces I would be seeing for the upcoming year, whether I liked it or not. Okabe, our young homeroom teacher, took the podium with a million-dollar smile he had probably spent an hour practicing in front of the mirror. He then proceeded to inform us that he was a gym teacher, that he was the handball team's advisor, that he played for a handball team back in college, which got pretty far in the tournament, that the current school handball team was short on members, so you'd be practically guaranteed a spot as a starter upon joining, and that there was no sport in this world as fun as handball. Having apparently run out of things to say after that long-winded speech, he finished with, Let's have everyone introduce themselves. Well, this is the same old way of kicking things off, and I expected as much, so it didn't exactly come off as a surprise. Starting from the left side of the seating chart, alternating boy, girl, boy, girl, one by one, people stood up and gave their name, the middle school they went to, and an interesting fact. Some people just mumbled their way through it, some people sounded completely relaxed, some told bag jokes which killed any excitement in the room, and all the while my turn gradually grew closer. Nerve-wracking. You know what I mean, right? Once I had managed to not stumble over the required autobiography I was practicing in my head, I sat back down in my seat, relishing in that liberating feeling you get after taking care of business. In turn, the person behind me stood up, yes, I'll remember that moment for the rest of my life, and spoke the words people would be talking about for years to come. Haruhi Suzumiya, from East Middle School. Everything was still normal at that point. Twisting around to look behind me would have been too much of a hassle, which is why I was facing forwards as I listened to her energetic voice. I have no interest in ordinary humans. If there are any aliens, time travelers, sliders, or espers here, come join me. That is all. That made me turn around. I found a girl with long, straight black hair decorated with a flashy hairband adoring her perfectly proportioned face as she stared back at the gawking students with unusually large black Determined eyes adorned with long, fringed eyelashes, her soft pink lips slightly pursed. I was dazzled by Haruhi's snow-white skin. A striking beauty stood before me. Haruhi let her gaze sweep across the classroom, looking like she was trying to pick a fight, before finally glaring at me, gaping at her with my jaw on the floor, then sat down without so much as cracking a smile. Is this some kind of joke? There were probably big question marks in the minds of everyone in the room as they wondered how they were supposed to react. Are, are we supposed to laugh? In hindsight, it was neither a joke nor a laughing matter. Haruhi, no matter when or where, is never joking. She was always dead serious. I learned this the hard way later on, so there's no doubt about it. Fairies of silence flickered around the classroom for 30 seconds before gym teacher Okabe hesitantly gestured to the next student and the frozen atmosphere finally returned to normal. And so we met. I deeply hope that it was mere coincidence. After capturing the hearts of everyone in the class in every way, Haruhi was relatively quiet for the next few days, playing the role of a seemingly harmless high school girl. I now understand very well what just people mean by the calm before a storm. Well, everyone who came to this particular high school was a student with average grades from one of the four city middle schools, which included East Middle School. This meant that some of the students had gone to middle school with Haruhi, so they realized that her decision to stay in the background was probably an omen of some kind. Unfortunately, I didn't know anyone from East Middle, and nobody in the class ever bothered to enlighten me. This led to what happened right after the morning homeroom started, a few days after her crazy introduction. This was a moment I'll never forget. I broke the world record for stupidity and spoke to Haruhi Suzumiya. My domino reaction of misfortune had begun, and I was the one who knocked the first one down. But come on, as long as Haruhi Suzumiya sat with her mouth shut, anyone looking at her would be convinced that she was just a beautiful high school girl. Who's going to blame me for losing my mind for a moment and assuming I could use the fact that my seat was right in front of hers to approach her? Naturally, there was only one topic to talk about. Hey, I said as I nonchalantly turned around with a casual smile on my face. About that stuff in your introduction earlier, how much of it was serious? With her arms crossed and her mouth forming an upside-down V, Haruhi stared into my eyes unflinchingly. What stuff earlier? Well, you know, the stuff about aliens or whatever. Are you an alien? She asked with a dead serious look on her face. No, but... No, but what? Just forget it. Don't talk to me then. You're wasting my time. The tone of her voice and the look she gave me were frigid enough to almost make me apologize out of reflex. Haruhi Suzumiya then stopped staring at me the way one would stare at Brussels sprouts and with a hmm, turned to glare in the direction of the blackboard. 
frozen out of a quick response, I was saved by the timely entrance of our homeroom teacher, Okabe. As I dejectedly turned the face of the front of the room, I noticed a bunch of people were curiously looking at me. When our eyes met, each person would half smile in a knowing way as if to say, <laughs> thought so, and then nod at to offer their condolences. That kind of left me feeling uncomfortable. It was only later that I learned that they all went to East Middle. So, yeah, given that my first contact with Haruhi would probably fall into the worst ever category, I had begun wondering if it would be better not to get involved with her. A week went by without anything happening to prove that idea wrong. However, there were other people in the class who hadn't grasped the situation or were just plain blind to their surroundings. Those classmates would approach Haruhi, which was always in a foul mood, brow wrinkled and mouth looking like an upside down V, and attempt to start a conversation about one thing or another. They were just some nosy girls who saw this girl who had introduced herself from day one and wanted to bring her into their circle of friends. I'm sure they were well-intentioned, but you have to take into account who they were dealing with. Did you watch that TV show last night? The one that starts at 9? No. What? Why not? Don't care. You should try watching an episode. Oh, but you won't know what's going on if you start now. That's right. In that case, I can fill you up with what's happened so far. Shut up. That's how it usually went. It'd be one thing if her response had been devoid of emotion, but Haruhi's facial expression and tone of voice were clearly broadcasting frustration, leaving the other person feeling like she's done something wrong. In the end, all the girl could say was, Um, well, you know, before slinking away with drooping shoulders. Did I say something strange? Rest assured you didn't. The only strange thing here is Haruhi's mind. I don't particularly have a problem with eating alone, but picking out your lunch by yourself while everyone else is chattering at their tables might make people wonder. I'm not saying that's the reason, but when it came time for lunch, I would move my desk next to the table of Kunikita, someone I had been relatively close to in middle school, and Tanaguchi, a guy from East Middle who just happened to sit near me. That's when the subject of Haruhi came up. Hey, you talked to Suzumiya the other day, right? Tanaguchi suddenly asked. She probably drove you away with some random nonsense. You got that right. Tanaguchi placed a boiled egg in his mouth and chewed. If you're interested in her, I wouldn't mince words. Just let it go, man. You should be well aware that Suzumiya's a freak. He mentioned by way of introduction that he'd been in the same class as her for three years in middle school, so he knew what he was talking about. She's the strangest girl you'll ever meet. I thought she might calm down after becoming a high school student, but she hasn't changed one bit. You heard her introduction, right? That thing about aliens or whatever? That was Kunikita busily picking bones from his grilled fish, cutting in. Yep. She said and did a bunch of strange things back in middle school, too. The most famous ones would be graffiti incident on the school grounds. What's that? There's this machine that uses chalk to draw white lines, right? What was it called again? Whatever. Anyway, someone used that to draw some huge, bizarre pictograph on the school grounds, and whoever it was snuck in at night to do it. Tanaguchi grinned. Maybe he was remembering what had happened. You'd be amazed. I arrived at school in the morning to find giant circles and triangles scribbled all over the ground. I couldn't tell what it was supposed to be from up close, so I tried looking at it from the fourth floor. I still couldn't tell what it was supposed to be. Oh, I remember seeing that. Wasn't that in the local section of the newspaper? They had an aerial photo. It looked like a failed attempt at a geoglyph. That was Kunikita. I didn't remember any of this. It was, it was. Headlined, Mysterious Graffiti Found on Middle School Grounds. So it came time to figure out who the culprit behind this ridiculous stunt was. And she was the one that did it? She admitted to it. It had to be her. Of course, they wanted to know why she did it. They even called her to the principal's office, seeing that all the teachers got together to question her. Why'd she do it? Dunno. With that offhand response, Tanaguchi began gulping down his white rice. Seems like she never fessed up. You try dealing with Suzumiya when she refuses to say a word and she'll give you that killer glare. Can't do a thing about it. According to one account, the drawing was to invite UFOs. Another said it was a summoning circle for evil demons. Yet another said it was to open a gate to another world. A bunch of rumors popped up, but since she never gave a reason, no one could really say. It's still a mystery. In my mind, I could picture Haruhi Suzumiya drawing white lines in the pitch black darkness of the school grounds with an earnest expression on her face. The clattering line markers she was dragging around in the heap of bags of lime were probably taken from the gym storeroom beforehand. She might have had at least brought a flashlight. I couldn't help but think that in the flickering light, Haruhi Suzumiya's expression seemed filled with an overwhelming sense of tragic heroism. Only in my imagination, though. Haruhi Suzumiya was probably genuinely trying to invite UFOs or summon demons to open up a gate to another world. 
She might have spent the whole night toiling away on the middle school grounds. And then, finally, after nothing showed up, she must have been really demoralized. But that's just speculation on my part. She also did a bunch of other stuff. Tanaguchi was in the process of finishing off his remaining bits of his lunch. One morning, we showed up to the classroom to find all of the desks out in the hall. She drew stars on the roof in paint. She even took a bunch of weird talismans, like the ones they stick on a corpse's head to reanimate it, and stuck them all around school. I don't really get her. But by the way, Haruhi Suzumiya wasn't in the classroom right then. We wouldn't have been able to have this conversation otherwise. Though I got the feeling she wouldn't care, even if she had been there. Speaking of Haruhi Suzumiya, she made a habit of leaving the room the moment 4th period ended, and not coming back until right before 5th period started. I'd never seen her bring a lunch, so she probably ate in the cafeteria. Still, it can't take an hour to eat lunch. Come to think of it, I could safely say that she was never in the room between classes. I wonder where she wandered off to. Even so, she's pretty popular. Tanaguchi was still talking. It's because she has the looks. Plus, she's great at all sports and probably gets better grades than most. You can tell she's a freak when she just stands there and keeps her mouth shut. Are there any stories about her love life? That was Kunikita, who barely touched his food. For a while, they kept switching from one guy to another, as far as I know. The longest lasted a week, and apparently the shortest was five minutes after she agreed to go out with him. It was always Suzumiya's doing the dumping, without exception. She always used the same line. I don't have time to deal with ordinary humans, then don't agree to go out in the first place. Tanaguchi was probably speaking from experience. I guess he noticed me looking at him since he hurriedly went on. It's just a story I heard, really. I don't know why, but apparently she doesn't turn anyone down. Everyone had it figured out by third year, so there wasn't anybody left to try and ask. But I get the feeling that the same thing's gonna happen in high school. That's why I'm warning you before you get any weird ideas. Give it up. Consider it a friendly warning from a classmate. There's nothing to give up on. I'm not even interested. Tanaguchi placed his empty lunchbox in his bag and smirked. If you ask me, then yeah. That's the best one in the class over there. Ryoko Asakura. Tanaguchi stuck his chin towards a cluster of chatting girls with their desks close together. And in the center of the cluster, with a cheerful smile on her face, was Ryoko Asakura. As far as I'm concerned, she's gotta be in the top three for our year. Did you check out all those freshman girls already or something? Oh yeah, I assigned them ranks from A to D, and I learned the full names of the ones who are ranked A. You only get to live the high school life once, might as well have fun doing it. And Asakura is an A? Kurikita asked. An A plus for sure. Once you've reached my level of expertise, you can just tell by looking at their face. She's definitely a nice person too. Well, even if you assume that half of Tanaguchi's opinionated rambling was a load of bullshit, Ryoko Asakura was, in fact, a girl who stood out in a different way from Haruhi. First of all, she was a hottie. It was also really sweet how she gave you the feeling that she was always smiling. Second, Tanaguchi was probably correct in judging that Ryoko was a nice person. By this point, there pretty much wasn't anybody left foolish enough to try to talk to Haruhi. The only person undeterred by the constant rude reception was Ryoko. She had the temperament of a class president. Third, Judging by her responses in class, she seemed to be pretty smart too. Every question directed towards her was guaranteed to be answered correctly. She was a student any teacher would love to have. Fourth, she was popular among girls. It had only been a week since school started, and she was already succeeded in becoming the ringleader of the girls in the class. She definitely had enough charisma to attract the masses. If you pit her against Haruhi, with her perpetually furred brow and incomprehensible thinking pattern, everyone's going to take the former. Myself included, I guess. Either way, they were way out of Tanaguchi's league. It was still April. At this moment, Haruhi Suzumiya had yet to act up. Which meant that for me, it was a month of relaxation. It'd be almost another month before Haruhi started rampaging. However, I should mention that I was able to gradually observe Haruhi's eccentric behavior during this period. Her hairstyle changed every day. I noticed a sort of pattern after looking at her for a while. It basically went like this. On Monday, Haruhi would show up with her long, straight hair flowing down her back in a normal fashion. The next day, she would walk in with a ponytail, looking flawless from every angle. But then on the next day, she would come to school with her hair tied in two pigtails. The day after that, it would be three. And on Friday, she would have four random spots tied off by ribbons. It was kind of odd. Monday equals zero, Tuesday equals one, Wednesday equals two, etc. In other words, she tied off another part of her hair for every day that passed. After resetting on Monday, she added one per day until Friday. I had no idea what it was supposed to signify.
Based on the pattern, she eventually ended up with six tied off spots. I wonder what her head looked like on Sunday. I kind of want to see it. Particularly number two, boys and girls are split up from gym class, so classes five and class six are combined. Girls change in odd number rooms, and the boys move to even number. Once the class before gym ends, the boys grab their gym clothes and prepare to move to class six. As that was happening, Haruhi Suzumiya completely ignored the fact that the boys were still present in the classroom and began taking off her uniform. She would then toss her uniform on her desk and pick up her gym clothes with an indifferent look on her face, as though she viewed the gallery of guys on the same level as pumpkins or potatoes. At that point, the completely dumbstruck guys, myself included, were kicked out of the room by Ryoko Asakura. It seems that afterwards, Ryoko led the other girls in lecturing Haruhi, but yeah, that didn't accomplish anything. Haruhi continued to change without giving a damn about her male audience, which is why when the bell for the break before gym rang, the guys were obligated, per Ryoko's orders, to immediately sprint out of the room. But damn, she was hot. I, I, I mean, let's, let's move on. Number three. Haruhi would invariably be absent from the classroom during breaks, and you could count on her to be out of the door carrying her bag the second school was out. At first, I thought she went straight home, but apparently not. To my amazement, she had been temporarily joining a wide range of school clubs. You'd see her dribbling around with the basketball team one day, only to find her sewing a pillowcase in the handicrafts club the next day, or swinging a stick on the lacrosse team the next. She even joined the baseball team, so it didn't look like she was leaving anything out. Every sports club, without exception, fervently pursued her membership. Turning their requests down, she would arbitrarily join a different club every day, in the end, she didn't stick with a single one of them. What exactly was she trying to accomplish? Naturally, the rumor that there's a strange girl in this year's freshman class spread like wildfire throughout school. It only took about a month before every single person involved with our school knew of Haruhi. By the beginning of May, it reached the point where some people didn't know the name of the principal, but everyone knew the name of Haruhi Suzumiya. I'm more willing to believe in the chance of someone discovering a plesiosaurus in Lake Biwa than in fate. But if fate does in fact affect the lives of humans with some unknown place, I'm guessing that this is when my wheel of destiny began to turn. I'm positive that someone up there had rewritten my future without my consent. It was the first day of Golden Week holidays. I discovered that I lost track of what day of the week it was, so I trudged up the winding hill dripping sweat in the scorching, abnormal May weather. What was the earth trying to do here? Did it catch yellow fever or something? Yo, Kion. Someone behind me tapped me on the shoulder. It was Tanaguchi. He had his blazer hung nonchalantly over his shoulder, necktie half loose with a grin plastered on his face. Did you go somewhere for Golden Week? Uh, I took my sister to see our grandmother. That's lame. What about you? It didn't work the whole time. How is that any better? Kion, a high school student shouldn't be babysitting his little sister on a merry little trip to visit grandparents. You gotta act more like a high schooler. Incidentally, the nickname Kion belongs to me. From what I can recall, one of my aunts was the first to call me that. It was a few years back when I hadn't seen her for a while. When she saw me, she went, Oh, Kion, you've grown so big! Which was an unwelcome twist on my name. Upon hearing that, my sister thought it was hilarious and started calling me Kion. Some friends who came to my house happened to overhear her calling me that, and ever since, it's been my nickname. Damn it. It's an annual family tradition for us cousins to get together during Golden Week. And with that indifferent response, I continued trudging up the hill. The feeling of sweat dripping from my hair was extremely unpleasant. Tanaguchi was cheerfully going on about stuff like some cute girl he met at work and how he'd been saving up for money so he had plenty to spend for a date. This could have been considered some of the most boring information I'd ever heard, along with telling people about your dreams or, or bragging about your pet or something. As I listened to Tanaguchi describe three different date scenarios with his non-existent companion, we finally made it to the school front gate. When I entered the classroom, I found that Haruhi Suzumiya was already in the seat behind mine, coolly looking out the window. Today, her hair was arranged in two buns sticking out like doorknobs, which made me think, oh, two spots, must be Wednesday. And with that information, I took my seat. That was probably when I became possessed by some demon. I can think of no other explanation. The next thing I knew, I was talking to Haruhi Suzumiya. So do you change your hair every day for the aliens? Haruhi turned her head towards me in a robotic motion and stared at me with a perpetually serious face. It was kind of scary. When did you notice? 
she said in a tone like she was talking to a rock on the side of a road. Come to think of it, when did I notice? Uh, just recently. I see. Haruhi rested her chin on her hand, looking like she was already sick of this. I think that each day of the week gives off a different image. This would be just the first time we actually reached a conversation. Just look at the Chinese characters used for the names of the each day of the week. Color-wise, Monday, moon, would be yellow. Tuesday, fire is red. Wednesday, water is blue. Thursday, wood is green. Friday, gold would be gold. Saturday, earth would be light brown. Sunday, sun would be white. I guess I could see where she's coming from. So with numbers, Monday would be in zero and Sunday would be six? Yes. Monday feels more like one to me. Nobody asked for your opinion. Oh, really? Harhi continued to stare at though she found something wrong with my muttering face. This lasted long enough for me to start feeling kind of uneasy. She asked, Have I met you before? A long time ago? Nope, I replied. And with the homeroom teacher Okabe's entrance, the conversation came to an end. That was just the beginning. Nothing particularly significant, but it was indeed the catalyst. Besides, Harhi was only in the classroom during class, so the only time I could talk to her was right before homeroom. And I can't deny the fact that being seated right in front of her provided the perfect position to casually striking up a conversation with her. In any case, a serious response from Haruhi was a surprise. Shut up, moron. Be quiet. Who cares about that? Were the replies I was expecting. The fact that I still talk to her anyway probably means that there was something wrong with me. Which is why when Haruhi showed up the next day without her hair tied off in three spots according to pattern, but with her long, beautiful black hair cut instead, I was rather disturbed. Anyway, wasn't cutting it the day after I pointed it out a bit hasty? What gives? Upon asking, Haruhi replied, None of your business. As usual, she merely sounded pissed without actually revealing what she was thinking. There was no way she was going to tell me why she cut her hair. Well, I expected as much. So did you really try joining all the clubs? Afterward, conversing with Haruhi in the short period before homeroom became a daily event. Not only did I have to initiate the conversation every time, but I had to be careful in choosing subject matter since talking about what was on TV yesterday or the weather would elicit a that's dead boring reaction from Haruhi. Let me know if you find one that's fun. It'd be useful to know. There aren't any. An immediate response. There totally aren't any at all. After repeating herself, Harhi exhaled like butterfly wings fluttering. Was that a sigh? I was expecting something better entering high school, but this is no different than back in grammar in middle school. Maybe I chose the wrong place. What criteria did you use to choose a school? The athletic and art clubs are all so normal. With so many clubs, you'd think there'd be at least one weird one. How exactly do you decide if something's normal or weird? Any club I like is weird. Anything else is totally normal. Isn't that obvious? Really, uh, obvious, is it? First I've heard about it. Hmm. She looked away, and today's conversation came to an end. Another day came. You know, I heard this rumor. Probably something worthless, right? Isn't it true that you dumped every guy you went out with? What gives you the right to ask me that? Harhi brushed her hair off her shoulder and glared at me with her dark black eyes. Man, the only time her face showed any emotion was when she was pissed off. You heard that from Tanaguchi? I can't believe I'm still in the same class with him in high school. Maybe he's a stalker. Uh, I doubt it. I think. I don't know what you've heard, but fine, it's probably all true. There seriously wasn't a single guy you wanted to go out with? Totally not. It appeared she had the habit of using the word totally. Every single one of them was ridiculously lame. Meet in front of the station on Sunday and do something obvious like watch a movie, go to an amusement park, or watch a sporting event. Then they'd have lunch at a fast food place, wander around and get a drink. Bye, see you tomorrow. What, that's it? I was wondering what she found wrong with that, but I kept my mouth shut. If Haruhi thinks it's a problem, then by all means, a problem there must be. And what's up with most of them asking me out over the phone? Important matters like that should be done in person. As I channeled the psyche of a guy who probably found it hard to make such an important, at least for him, confession while being glared like an insect, 
I decided to play along for now. Yeah, I guess so. I'd probably ask her in person. That's not important. Jesus, make up your mind. The problem is that every man on the planet is worthless. Honestly, I was irritated for most of middle school. You still are. Then, uh, what type of guy do you want? I'm guessing an alien. An alien, or something along those lines. In any case, as long as they aren't an ordinary human. It doesn't matter if they're male or female. Why are you so particular about non-humans? As soon as I asked, Haruhi looked at me like I was retarded. Isn't that more fun? I suppose she might be right. I won't argue with Haruhi's opinion. I wouldn't mind if there was a mysterious, beautiful transfer student that was actually half alien, half human. And if that moron Tanaguchi sitting nearby trying to spy on Haruhi and me had actually been an investigator from the future, that would be pretty cool. And if Ryoko Asakura, who had been smiling in my direction for some reason, had actually been an esper, life at school would have been a bit more fun. But it's all impossible. Aliens, time travelers, and espers couldn't possibly exist. Even if they did, they wouldn't just pop up in front of us. Besides, there's no way someone would walk up to me and say, Hey, guess what? I'm actually an alien. By way of introduction for no reason whatsoever. And that's why! Harhi yelled out, knocking her chair down in the process. Everyone in the class turned around. And that's why I'm working so hard! Sorry I'm late! Our homeroom teacher, Okabe, looking bright, cheerful, and out of breath, rushed in. Took a look at Haruhi standing with her fist in the air glaring at the ceiling, and everyone else in the classroom looking at Haruhi in unison, and froze in bewilderment. Uh, uh homeroom starting. Haruhi plopped back into her chair and began fervently staring at the corner of her desk. Phew. I turned back towards the front of the room, the rest of the class did the same, and teacher Okabe staggered over to his podium and cleared his throat. Uh, sorry I'm late, uh, homeroom starting. And with that reiteration of his opening remarks, we return to our daily mundane routine. This daily mundane routine is probably what Haruhi detested most. But isn't that how life goes? Still, I couldn't ignore this crazy feeling in the dark corner of my heart that envied Haruhi's way of life. She was still eagerly waiting for that chance encounter with the extraordinary, something I had given up on long ago. And you can't deny that she was going all out for it. It's not like aliens are going to fall out of the sky if you wait long enough. Haruhi's point was in that case, we should reach out for them. Thus, the markings on the grounds, the painting on the roof, and the talismans around school. Jeez Louise. I don't know when Haruhi began doing things to make spectators think she's some sort of mental patient. But I guess that if she already spent a long time waiting before running out of patience and attempting bizarre rituals with no results, it would make perfect sense for her to end up always looking like she hated the world. Or, I guess not. Hey, Kion! During break, Tanaguchi came over with a moody expression plaster on his face. That expression really makes you look like a moron, Tanaguchi. Screw you, forget about that. Anyway, what type of magic did you use, Kion? What do you mean by magic? I responded, as I recalled the saying that the sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Sticking his thumb at Haruhi's seat, which Haruhi, true to form, had vacated the instant class ended, Tanaguchi said, I've never seen Suzumiya talk that long before. What'd you say to her? Don't know. What did I say? I get the feeling I just asked whatever was on my mind. Tanaguchi had this overly exaggerated look of shock on his face. It's the end of the world. Kunikita popped out from behind him. Well, Kion's always liked weird girls. Don't say things like be misconstrued, I replied. I don't give a damn whether or not Kion likes weird girls, said Tanaguchi. What I want to know is how Suzumiya and Kion managed to hold an actual conversation. I can't accept it. If I had to guess, wouldn't it be because Kion would also be categorized as a weirdo? Well, yeah, a guy with a nickname like Kion can't be normal, but, but still. Stop going Kion Kion. Hell, I'd rather have you call me by my actual name. I would at least like my little sister call me Big Brother. I'd also like to know. A girl's voice suddenly descended upon us. A clear soprano. I looked up to find Ryoko Asakura with a sincere smile on her face. Suzumiya never responds no matter how hard I try. How did you get her to talk to you? Is there a trick to it? I gave it a little consideration. Or should I say, pretended to give it consideration before shaking my head. The answer was obvious after all. I don't know. Asakura laughed. Hmm, but I'm relieved now. I'd be worried if Suzumiya kept isolating herself from the rest of the class. It's a good thing that she managed to make a friend. 
If you're wondering why Ryoko Asakura was acting concerned as though she was class president, that's because she was class president. It had been decided in the long homeroom period earlier. Friend, huh? I tilted my head. You think so? I get the feeling I've only ever seen her with a sullen expression on that face. Keep up whatever you're doing to make Suzumiya open up to the class. We were fortunate enough to be put into the same class, so should we all be friends, right? I'm counting on you. Counting on me? Easy for you to say. If I need to tell her anything from now on, I'll ask you to pass on the message for me. Wait, hold on. I'm not her spokesperson or anything. Pretty please? She even clasped her hands together. I could only stammer grunts on the form of uh and uh, which would apparently took to me my consent. And with a smile like a yellow tulip in our direction, she returned to the cluster of girls. The fact that every girl in the cluster was turning their attention this way was enough to sink my mood another two notches. Hey, Kiona, we're buddies, right? Tanaguchi said this with a suspicious glint in his eyes. What was he talking about? Even Kunikido was standing there with his eyes closed and arms crossed while nodding his head for no reason. Guys are all idiots. Apparently, it was decided at some point that the seating order was changed every month. Class president Ryoko Asakura went around with a cookie tin of quadruple folded pieces of paper to be drawn. I drew a quite excellent seat next to the window facing the courtyard, second from the back of the room. As for the person in the seat behind me, I don't know what happened, but Haruhi Suzumiya sat behind me looking like she was suffering a cavity. I wonder if students will start disappearing one by one. Or maybe a teacher will be found murdered inside a locked classroom. That's some dangerous stuff. There was a mystery research society. <laughs> How was it? A joke. They haven't encountered anything remotely resembling a case. All the members are just mystery novel fanatics. None of them look like detective material. Well, duh. I was expecting more from the Supernatural Phenomenon Research Society. Really? But it was just a bunch of occult freaks. What do you think of that? Not much. Oh man, it's boring. Why doesn't the school have a single decent club? Well, you can't do anything about what doesn't exist. I expected high school to have more radical clubs. I feel like some stupid baseball player aiming for the national championships who just discovered that his high school doesn't even have a baseball team. Was I supposed to feel sorry for her? All else aside, Harhi hadn't even specified what kind of club would satisfy her. Did she even know? She was just vaguely thinking, I want to do something fun. What would the something fun be? Solving a homicide? Looking for aliens? Exercising demons? I get the feeling that she hadn't even decided yet. I offered my opinion. Well, in the end, humans have to settle for what's in front of them. If you think about it, the only humans who couldn't were the ones who made discoveries or inventions and advanced civilization. Planes were invented because people wanted to fly. Cars and trains came to be because people wanted easier means to move around. But this all came from a limited number of people, who had innovative plans and concepts. In other words, geniuses made it all possible. Average people like us are the best off living ordinary lives. Shut up. Harhi cut me off and turned away, just as I was getting into a groove. She looked like she was in a really bad mood. Well, nothing new about that. That girl probably didn't care what it was as long as a phenomenon that defied the tedium of reality. But such a phenomenon wasn't going to readily appear in this world. Or rather, it wasn't going to appear, period. Long live the laws of physics. They're what allow us to live life in peace and quiet. Too bad for Haruhi. At least, that's what I thought. I wonder what the catalyst was. Maybe our conversation gave her the idea. It all happened so fast. Bright rays of sunlight were putting me to sleep as my head swayed back and forth, to and fro. I felt something grab my collar and pull with frightful vigor. Exhausted, I felt the back of my head meet the edge of the desk behind me with a fierce crash. I could feel fresh tears in my eyes. What are you doing? When I turned around in rage and indignation, I found Haruhi standing grabbing my collar with, for the first time ever, a smile reminiscent of a blazing sun in an equatorial sky. If you could take the temperature of a smile... Hers would have matched the climate in the middle of a rainforest. I figured it out! Don't spit on me. Why didn't I realize such a simple thing sooner? Harhi looked at me with her eyes shining so brightly as Alpha Signe. I had no choice but to ask. Realize what? If there aren't any, I just have to make one myself. Make what? A club! It appears that being pressed up against a desk wasn't the only reason my head was hurting. I see, that's great. 
By the way, you can let me go now. What's with your reaction? You should be a little happier about the discovery. You can tell me all about your discovery later. Depending on the circumstances, I might even share your joy. But for now, just calm down. What do you mean? We're in class. Harhi finally released her grip on my collar. As I turned my ringing head back towards the front of the room, I could see my fellow classmates with their mouths half open and the female teacher, fresh out of college, with a piece of chalk in one hand on the verge of tears. I gestured behind me for Harhi to hurry up and sit down. Then I gestured my palm up and held it out towards the poor English teacher. Please continue with class. As she muttered something under her breath, Harhi finally took her seat and the female teacher went back to writing on the board. Make a new club? Hmm. She couldn't possibly be including me as a member, right? The throbbing in the back of my head boded of ill things to come.